Hello everybody, Steve here, and today in this video, we are still recovering from our flu, cold, whatever it is we've got, uh, but I definitely feel a lot better. Still the voice is a little bit off, but I've had a number of people that have asked me, how did we find the place that we bought? So when we came to Korea, uh, there's a number of ways in which you can find a place to live, and we were buying, looking to buy an apartment or a villa, something of that nature. And you have a couple of choices. One choice is that you find a local realtor. And a local realtor will ask you how much you're looking to buy, uh, what you can afford, you know, whether it's three bedroom, two bath, certain areas that you're interested in. And what those realtors will do will look in their stock of listings and they will direct you towards the ones that generally they hold because they will get a greater percentage of profits if they sell and they're your uh, they're your buying agent in a sense kind of like in the united states in the united states when you deal with a realtor it, the buyer's real estate agent and the seller's real estate agent usually the commission is six percent and they'll split it in half however if your realtor has a property and you want to buy it, then they will get the full 6%. So what I've noticed here in Korea is that <clears throat> there's a lot of great realtors. Um, I think Korean realtors and house buying and apartment buying or condo buying in Korea is different than in the United States. In Korea, what I found is you need to be more specific in asking questions uh, than what you do in the United States. You know, in the United States, it's like, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, which they do in Korea, uh, how much are utilities, what is property tax, what is the location of schools, and so on and so forth. What are the amenities of the apartment complex that you're looking at or villa complex? Uh, it seems like you need to ask more pointed questions here in Korea than you do in the, off than in the United States. In the United States, good realtors will basically, I mean, they will over inundate you with information in regards to, okay, well, this is in this neighborhood. These are the schools. This is this, you know, you've got this gym here, this park here, whatever. They'll give you all the low down on the property in the area that you're looking at. Here in Korea, it's just kind of like, okay, well, we're looking for a three bedroom, two bath apartment for X amount of money. And then they will look through their listings and show you and you walk through them uh, generally, your realtor will pick you up, uh, you know, or you could meet them there. Uh, there's that option as well. And then they'll just kind of let you walk around. And, and But there's to get the details that you want that we're accustomed to in the United States, you need to ask your realtor. Uh, and, the, and once you ask those questions, the realtors are really good about answering those questions. But it just seems like United States realtors offer detailed information right up front versus Koreans, which wait for you to ask questions. So if you don't ask questions of, well, how much is the property tax per year? What is the apartment fee? How much is average electricity or water or what is included with the apartment fee? If there's an apartment fee, um, does it include all the utilities? Does it include gas, water, TV? I mean, th those are some options. So be sure to ask questions. Uh, and we're going to go over that and other information when we actually look at apartments. Uh, the thing that helped us the most was using Naver. So Naver.com, and we're going to do a little screen share here. Boom! There is Naver.com. And let me get that a little bit smaller. Alrighty. So this is Naver.com. And on Naver, you can have an email account. They have cafes, uh, blog sites, shopping news, stock, real estate maps, manga, cartoons. I mean, they've got a ton of information. And you might notice that on here, it's all in English. Well, originally it's in Korean. And so what I ended up using is Chrome for my browser because it has a translate plugin that you can use that will translate from Korean into English. So it makes, if your Korean isn't good, or non-existent, you can use Chrome and it will translate a, and do a really good job in regards to checking out Naver or other Korean websites. Uh, it will not change the Korean from pictures uh, into English, but if it's written text in Korean, it will translate it into English, or you can find another one that is similar. 
So the first thing we're going to end up doing is going up here below the search bar in where it says real estate. So we got real estate. We click on that. And again, here's that plugin, always translate Korean. And this is the map. So what we're going to end up doing, you're going, to, you're going to have to know a little bit of Korean of the area that you're looking in. And uh, so let's see, Youngin, Jungju, and trying to find uh, trying to find where we're going to go. Well, let's just kind of cruise in, and then what we can do is we can zoom out, and we can use. So up here is in Seoul, and if we go down here is where we want, and this is Pyeongtaek area. So what we want to do is kind of zoom into this. So we'll zoom in, and for example, Camp Humphreys is right in this peninsula here. So there's a lot of places uh, outside of Camp Humphreys, smaller places. There are some larger places like the Brownstone Apartments where we're at. And then if you go into Pyeongtaek, there's a lot. Um, but what we want to do is we want to go down here to Asanshi, and we're going to take a look at this area right here. And this area has got some great apartments, just to give you an example. Uh, Asan is about 10 minutes away from Camp Humphrey, 10, 15 minutes away from Camp Humphrey's one of the gates. And what we're going to do is take a look at Techno Valley Easy the One, or EG the One. It depends on how they how they have it. And what we end up seeing here is that there's trading, there's 52 properties available, eight charters, 32 monthly, and uh, let's see if we can zoom in just a tad more. So there we go. And we'll go like, here's, here's one, and I'll show you a range of different properties starting at about 225 million, 220 million, and it'll show you there's 79 for sale, 35, 19, 74. Let's go to the 79. Now this will open up the side menu, which is that section of apartments. And on this left side, it will show you some information for the sale price is anywhere from 208 million to 240 million. And for those, uh, let's just do 200 million and divide that by 1300 for an exchange rate. So you're looking at about $153,000, $155,000 for $200,001. So if we scroll down here, you can see some different properties, and some of them won't have pictures. Uh, others will. So we'll click on this, and it opens up this window here, and you have some options. So if there's pictures included, it will be along the top here. So if we click that, and let's make this a little bit bigger. And it will show some pictures of what the area, the apartment building that that apartment is actually in. Uh, it will show you the, the floor numbers and things like that, the square footage. And then it might have a diagram like this to show you the layout of the apartment. So you have your entryway here. You come in, you have a bedroom, you've got the living room, kitchen. You know, there's the kitchen there, then another bedroom, another bedroom, you know, two full baths. This is obviously the master bedroom and then maybe a little laundry room or whatever. Uh, the other thing, it'll have pictures. So you can see that, get a preview of the apartment that you're looking at. And so for here is the living room looking into the kitchen. Another shot, pretty clean LED lighting in most newer apartments. And that one has, looks like marble uh, wall on that wall there. Really clean. Pantry, another shot. There's the kitchen. That looks really nice. And notice the gas stove. Uh, the majority of apartments here in Korea have gas stoves. Um, some of them have ovens. Some of them don't. Uh, if you get a Korean-style oven, they're really kind of small. Uh, so there is a possibility that if you really like baking, that might be something to look for. Or, you know, have somebody come in and install one. Uh, so there's the kitchen there. Windows are pretty small, and there's a little TV screen. So if somebody comes up, rings into your door or through the bottom access area where the car park is, uh, you can see them there. It also has TV and radio. Uh, a little three-burner stove. I'd definitely upgrade that. 
Ah, there's an oven there. So that's nice. So you can get a pretty good idea of what the rooms look like and what the properties, you know, the bathrooms and the layout, and you can, the color scheme, the flooring, and so on and so forth. Obviously, I wouldn't buy a property without actually physically going into it, but that's an option that you can use. Uh, the other information that we can see here is the sales price. So this one is 225 million won and it is in easy the one complex. It's on the 10th floor of about 20 floors, 22 floors, something like that. And we get down here, property, median occupancy, two air conditioners, road view, uh, joint and elastic construction. I'm not sure what elastic construction is, uh, but it'll give you the, uh, the area. Again, 10 out of 24 floors, so it's on the 10th floor. Waterproofing, it's a three bedroom, two bath, and then you have a monthly management fee. So when you buy an apartment here in Korea, uh, consider it kind of like a condo. You buy a condo and you're gonna have monthly condo fees. Well, here in Korea, the majority of people live in apartments. Um, you can buy houses, you can buy villas, which are kind of like smaller apartment units and so on and so forth. But uh, the majority of people live in apartments and you have a monthly management fee. And that management fee will cover the upkeep, the landscaping, the elevator maintenance, the trash. Uh, there's different things that will be covered under that monthly maintenance fee. Um, you know, the painting of the outside of the apartment building, the paying for security, the upkeep of the underground car park, um, you know, just a lot of different things. So you don't have to worry about, you know, landscaping. You don't have to worry about hiring somebody to pick up the trash. You don't have to hire somebody to, uh, you know, fix the outside of the apartment because that's what that fee is for. Uh, usually larger apartments will have 24 hours security and many of them have staff that are there 24 hours a day that are on call. Uh, next here we see a management fee is included. And in this management fee, we see electricity and water is included. Now some apartments won't have anything under this listing. So in other words, you would have to pay for electricity, gas, water, all on your own. But there are some that in that monthly fee is included water, electricity, sometimes cable TV, uh, sometimes internet. So Again, something to look forward to. And we found that with our Korean realtor, who is really good, by the way, but because they're so used to people knowing how to do this stuff and that we were foreigners, even though my wife's Korean, we've just been out of the country for, you know, 30 years or so, um, it ends up that we didn't know about this until a little bit later on. And then we started asking the questions because we found neighbor and said, hey, well, in the management fee, how much is that per month? And what is covered under the management fee for this property? Is electricity and water covered? Is anything else? And if that's something that will sway you to buy a property or not, um, keep that in mind. Uh, a loan doesn't exist, so that means that whoever owns this property uh, owns it outright. Uh, there's no monthly deposit. It says that it's facing a southeast direction based on the living room. So that can make a big difference in regards to heating and cooling. Uh, there are some apartment buildings, the older apartment buildings, that if they're facing towards the south and they get that afternoon sun, um, you will be paying more for air conditioning. It all depends on the efficiency of the insulation and the, the windows that they used and so on and so forth. So you can kind of get an idea of what is going to work or what's not going to work, or if you want shade in the afternoon or in the morning, that's what you would look for. Uh, heating method is fuel, which is gas, uh, city gas, and uh, that is individual heating. In other words, you would have to pay for that expense of the city gas. Again, this one is open for immediate occupancy, and it will give you information, of course, the property inquiry, so on and so forth. Uh, it's that realtor right there. And then here is a breakdown of the brokerage fees and tax information. So let's say you've got 225 million won to buy a, an apartment and you're looking at this and you're trying to figure out, well, how much am I gonna pay? In this section here, it will show you 
what you need to pay as far as the brokerage fee. So in this brokerage fee, it's 0.4%. So that's going to be approximately uh, 2, 2,475,000 won. Oh, and then there's above that is a VAT tax, a value-added tax of 900,000 won. And then acquisition tax, you're going to have 2.7 or 2.25 million won, local education tax. These are usually one-time taxes or fees that you're going to pay. So local education, which goes to schools, 225,000 won. Special tax for rural areas, I don't think there's anything there. Uh, approximately 128,000 won based on the purchase price. And then they will have property tax. Uh, so on and so forth and in all of that. So you can kind of get an idea of what the price of the property is by the listing, but it'll also include the brokerage fees and taxes and, and things like that. So you can get a, a more specific number in regards to the apartment or the unit or the property that you're looking at. Uh, one thing to look out for with this is that some of these listings on here will use the exact same pictures. Uh, I mean, exact same pictures, though there are the same layouts for multiple units within an apartment complex. Some of these realtors will use the pictures from one and use them on listings for other ones. So, for example, when we were looking around, we, we saw a unit that we wanted to look at and we saw on another unit had the exact same pictures. Except when we went to the first apartment, what we found out is the... The, the colors in the kitchen weren't the same. And it was like, well, wait a second. Well, they updated it. And it's a, so they just took stock pictures from a while ago and they hadn't updated the pictures. So that's another important reason to go check out any property that you want to look at. So, yeah. Uh, let's see, what else do we got? Oh, you've got Pyong. Let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger. Uh, Korean real estate is listed in Pyong or, do I have to make it that bigger? No, it's just not doing it for me. Okay. Well, it's 100%. But they list it in Pyong, which is right here. And in Pyong, it is so many square feet, um, but you can end up seeing that uh, the property information will show that it's 95.59 meters squared. Um, but the Pyong is a little bit different, so it might be, you know, 43 Pyong or 39 Pyong or whatever. But you can Google that and figure out the square footage in regards, because they don't list anything in square footage. It's either by meters squared or by the Korean measurement Pyong. So what you can end up doing is going through, and we'll close this out, and you can just go through and search uh, different apartments or different units, like this one's for 225 million, there's 210, there's 215, there's 208 million. Let's go ahead and click on that and see what that looks like. 72 meters square. So let's look at uh, 72 square meter, meters to square feet. So that's 775 square feet. So that would kind of give you an idea and you keep that in mind. Uh, the apartment that we have is a four bedroom, two bath, and it's about 1,500 square feet. I, f I think it's like 43 Pyong or something. So some of these will actually have people living in them. So when you click on the pictures, you will get a better look of, or I should say a more accurate uh, picture of the property itself. So you can see it like, looks like they got some kind of business, home business thing going on, but, and, and some of these pictures is kind of like, you know, well, there, there it is, there's the picture, and they don't show the kitchen, they don't show the bathrooms. Some of them will just show the living room and, and maybe a kitchen, but no bedrooms or bathrooms or anything else like that. So it kind of makes you wonder, because in the United States, uh, pictures and videos are key. You know, the more pictures you have, the better. Because, uh, you know, if it, it sparks your interest, it sparks joy in you and your wife likes that. Oh, I like that. You know, what that looks like there. I like this and whatever. I mean, let's face it. The wife buys the property is what it comes down to. 
So the more pictures, the better. But here in Korea, you'll notice that a lot of these don't have pictures. So you'll see that one doesn't. There's a few there that don't. Um, there's a number of them that don't have pictures. This, this apartment complex actually has a lot of pictures. But there are some that you'll click on and let's say, let's see what this one does. That will have next to no pictures. So this apartment complex, uh, EZ the one or EG the one, uh, depends on how it's worded. Um, yeah, there's some that will have a lot of pictures. There's some that just won't have any pictures, which I don't understand because you'll talk to some realtors and you'll say, hey, well, this is what I'm looking for. Three bedroom, two baths, so many square feet. This is our budget that we have. And they'll say, oh, well, hey, we've got this one here. And then they pull up the listing and show you and there's no pictures. And then yet they'll say that the seller is motivated and really needs to sell this property. Well, then why don't you have pictures? I don't know. It's it's in Korea. It's not really a big a thing. I mean, it's getting better over time, but it, for some reason, it's just like oh, a property's listed, it's for sale. Click there, it is. You know, uh, doesn't have pictures, whatever. They, it, it's kind of a different uh, mentality when it comes to buying properties in Korea versus the United States. Uh, and our experience in the United States, it's all about pictures. It's all about pre-screening. And that's what we're doing here with the neighbor side is looking through and pre-screening. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, let's see, where, yeah, I think this is it right here. not it. So this is Brownstone Apartments. Uh, this is in the apartment complex where we live. So we'll go ahead and click this and we'll take a look and see what Brownstone has. So we're looking at 400 million. So, you know, it's, it's some decent, but again, look at that. There's not many pictures there, which it seems kind of strange. There's one, uh, 110, 15th floor is a good apartment, a good returns, 290 million. And we come up with this, blah, blah, blah. Now this actually goes to a Korean website. So this will have some different information. Now this is kind of rare. I haven't seen too many of these, but this is a brownstone real estate agent. There's their information on the right, and it will give you the information, the listing number with the real estate listing number that they have right there. And then they have the neighbor real estate listing. And then it will show the number of Pyong. You can change that back and forth um, to square meters or Pyong. And southeast, uh, 15 floors, three bedroom, two bath. Maintenance cost is 250,000 won. Items include is electricity, water, internet, and TV. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's something. I mean, our, our maintenance cost is less than that, but we don't have our internet and our TV through that. So that, that's something to look at. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's look at another one. 110, brownstone, five. Let's go for, let's go big. Oh, this is going to be the same thing. Yeah. This is odd. Four bedroom, two bath. It's on a low floor, 250,000 won. Again, electricity, water, internet, TV, loan doesn't exist. In other words, it's probably paid off. And it'll give you the information, a total of 17 buildings, almost 1,000 people or 1,000 units, 15 floors. Number of parking spaces, it'll give you a total, uh, 1.4 vehicles per household, which with brownstone, it's not necessarily true. Um, there are apartment complexes that will have designated parking. So in other words, if you buy an apartment or you lease an apartment there, you will get an assigned park parking spot. Uh, with Brownstone, that's not the case. And so there are people that have multiple vehicles, more than 1.4 vehicles. I can tell you that. I know them. And uh, yeah, it's uh, individual heating, city gas, uh, type 2 general It'll give you some transaction details. Uh, da, 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 da. So the last time this was sold was uh, on 23rd of the 12th, which was 49, uh, uh, 495 million won. And it's valued more than that now. 
Now it's 520. So they're trying to make some money off of this, um, which is strange because eh, real estate prices have kind of gone down in Korea. The reason that they stay kind of relatively high here in this area, especially around Camp Humphreys, is because of the military base and because of the number of contractors and families that work on Camp Humphreys. So down here, you end up seeing a daycare is like seven minute walk. There's actually a daycare facility or like a preschool facility that is on this apartment complex. It also has a senior care facility. It's kind of like a senior center. I haven't been there, I'm, even though I'm 57. Uh, da, 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 Dream daycare center. Uh, they got a couple of different ones and it'll show you the number of walking minutes away. Kindergarten. Pyeong Tech Songhwa Elementary School. Uh, it will have a number of different things there. So that's kind of, it's kind of interesting, and it comes up with that. Let's see this. Oh, that one's going to go out there too. This company must be doing a lot because... Let's find one that's back to the normal. No, that's going to do that too. So a lot has changed recently within like the last month or so. Let's see if we can take a look. There's one. So this is a more normal listing. So again, it'll show you the building number of where it's at, uh, the layout of the apartments. In other words, the square footage or the square meters of the apartments. And it'll give you a layout. Uh, some apartments have a basic layout. And if you look to the top here, this is the basic type. And then if you click expandable, they will do away and expand out towards because they have kind of like this, this area here down at the bottom for, um, I guess back in the day, you would hang your laundry up there, it would dry, and so you put your drying racks in those little uh, veranda areas there with sliding glass doors. But the expandable options gives you more square footage, more usable square footage, and you still have a couple of places where you've got a veranda. Um, Personally, I would go for the more expandable, get the more square footing, and because you're going to have a washer and dryer anyway. So that's the entryway, and on the right, what you end up seeing, and on the left are closet doors for shoes and jackets and things like that. we got a bedroom off to the left. There's a bedroom. Some of these come with furniture, some don't. So some of them are totally empty. Some of them, uh, that's a pretty good size area there. It's got a nice view. And again, that view is in the after, actually that looks like it's in the evening. So that's, you're gonna get that afternoon sun. The good thing is with these double pane windows, you're going to have enough insulation that it's not going to overpower and just make it unbearable in that unit. In older apartments, you will have that problem. So again, uh, Brownstone has been around for, what is it, six, seven years now, something like that, and the insulation is really good. Uh, let's see what else they got. Uh, it's kind of a different type of kitchen area. We personally didn't like that. You know, usually you put your uh, table, kitchen table there, washer and dryer included. That's pretty nice. Bedroom size, full windows. Mm, it's okay. Some of them have air conditioning units, as you can see there. Some bedrooms don't. And again, that's something to take into consideration as well. There are some apartment units where it'll be like this one is a four bedroom, two bath. But it'll have, we have an air conditioner in the master bedroom, the living room. Uh, there's an air conditioner in this place right here, which you can see that air conditioner there. But on the fourth bedroom, there's no air conditioner. So if you wanted to put one in, you'd have to hire somebody, buy it, have them put it in, and then that way you can have an individual AC for each unit. Uh, but since it's just the wife and I, and that's just kind of the hobby room, it's not a big deal for us. Uh, anyway, yeah, so what you can end up doing is just checking out different properties uh, that are in and around Camp Humphreys or the whatever area that you're going to look at. And let's say if we're going to zoom out here. And we'll take a look at, it's Onsong. Let's go up here more towards Piantec, which is in this area here. And there's more apartment buildings. 
But what you'll end up seeing is that in Piontech, it's definitely more city, and you can see the prices 450 million won, 620, 630, 800 million won. Uh, there's definitely a lot of places that you can buy, uh, you know, in and around Piontech and so on and so forth. I'm just kind of wondering what's a Go Duck. That's a new town. That's a new city that where Samsung is building their new uh, uh, manu or a microchip processing plant. So let's take a look and see what we see there. 550 million, 750 million. Wow. Let's take a look at, at one of these places. Of course, if I share the screen, it'll probably, probably look a little bit better. Uh, so anyway, what we ended up doing is we're looking in this Godok, which is a new city that popped up, and Samsung is building a manufacturing city. Uh, manufacturing facility and so this place just exploded basically overnight and you can see the sales uh, 750 million won it's definitely more expensive than in the area close to uh, Camp Humphreys so we'll take a look at some pictures and see what 750 million won will give you more up to date definitely that's a shot from the living room into the kitchen put your table right there that looks pretty nice Nice wardrobe, windows. It's a walk-in closet, so that must be the master bedroom. Again, it's got that little veranda area. Eh, I'm not a big fan of that, personally. Decent sized rooms. All of those things are closet space. Here's the inside of the master closet. But again, no pictures of, you know, close-ups of the kitchen or, you know, the, the bathrooms, things like that. It just seems kind of odd. Well, we can see this is a four bedroom and you see the layout. Here's the entryway. You got a bedroom, a bedroom, a very small bedroom. Uh, you know, the main kitchen, the living room, then the master bedroom, walk-in closet space, their own bath, so on and so forth. For 750 million won. Wow. 112 square meters. Mm. That's a three, basically it's a three, two with a, a storage room. It says it's a three, two. So yeah, uh, in Godok, again, it's a, it's a new city. And this is by using neighbor real estate. It's a great way to check out prices of property. Uh, let's go down to Stoll down by the river. Cause you know, that's gotta be crazy expensive. Oh, not too bad. 380 million, 3.5 billion. Yeah, so now we're getting into, uh, let's see, 380, 3.5 billion. Well, let's, let's find something, 4.3 billion. Let's take a look on the Han River and see what we got. And see, so this is a one, two, is a four bedroom, two bath, 3.5 billion won. 12 minutes to the station. Let's look at the pictures of this place. Of course, Seoul is horrendously, it's just huge. So one, two, three, four bedroom. Where's the entryway? Here's the entryway, closet, little area. Okay, there's a bathroom, bedroom, bedroom, office kind of thing. There's another bedroom. It's got to be the master with a walk-in closet, its own bath, full full bath, little veranda. So there's the outside. Oh, this is like big time expensive. Wow. Yeah, that's that's going to be expensive. Marble floors. Wow, pristine white. That that's too much white for me. But bathrooms are basically the same. A little bit different on the, that looks odd. Uh, most, most bathrooms come with bidets, so that's kind of nice. That's kind of a larger shower area, which is good. Ooh, look at that. That's nice. Look at that. The shower, the rain shower, and the full-size tub. His and her sink. That's nice. There's a bedroom. Marble floors. Wow, look at that. For billions of wine. 
that is, oh, and it's even got a little crossway. So you know there's probably a gym and stuff like that. Private parking. It was built in 2015. Wow. That's kind of wild. Park, recreation areas, ponds. We kind of got that, but not that expensive. Playgrounds. Exercise equipment. Oh, they got their own pool. Holy crow. Swimming. Little park areas. Walking paths. That is mad expensive. Bike racks, the whole nine yards. Uh, yeah, so if you got a lot of money, go to Seoul. <laughs> but if you don't have a lot of money, and usually the people that uh, ask me questions on this are the people that are retired military or they were military and they got out, they have a Korean spouse, and so they're looking to come and retire in Korea, which you can do with an F4 and F1 visa. Granted that you meet the monetary requirements for those visas and you don't work in Korea. In other words, you don't have a job and employed by a Korean employer uh, because those two visas, the F4 and F1, will not allow you to work. You can work and do remote work or work in the United States or online, you know, do remote work, but you just can't work for a uh, Korean employer under those two visas. And you have to prove that you have enough money uh, to meet the monetary requirements. So, but regardless of, and you know, maybe you're on an education visa, maybe you're, I don't know, maybe you got an inheritance and you're uh, you want to buy an apartment in Korea as an investment property. You can actually do that. You can come over to Korea as a tourist and you can buy property in Korea on a tourist visa, but you just have to get permission from the Korean government. Uh, we had to buy or get permission from the Korean government to buy our property because of our visa. If you're not a Korean citizen, you must get permission to buy that property. And it's it's just a few added steps, which isn't bad. Um, but with that being said, to kind of narrow down the different types of properties or the areas that you're interested in so that you don't waste time with the realtor taking you all over and, you know, showing you places that, you know, hey, yeah, I don't like this layout. You can use neighbor real estate to find places that look better and weed out the ones that you don't like and say, this is kind of the style that we're looking for. This is the, the, the square meters that we're looking at that we think we'd be comfortable in. And this is our budget and how much that we have to spend and whether you have financing or buying in cash. Uh, what I will say is if you're buying in cash, the process goes a little bit quicker. So <laughs> if, if you sell a house in the United States or you got an inheritance or you just skimped your entire life and now you've got a big chunk of money to buy an apartment here in Korea or other property, you can do that on a tourist visa or you can do it on pretty much any other visa as well. Um, but again, you're going to have to pay for property tax. You're going to have to pay for the apartment fee uh, every month. But those fees are not really bad. Uh, let me see if I can find, to give you an example, of the prices. There it is, Korean one room expense. I can find it. There's Colorado, there's Korea. Rent mortgage. Uh, da. Okay, so here we go. Uh, let's take a look at this. I want to show you this here. Uh, this is our apartment here. And basically in our housing, because we bought the apartment outright, our property tax is about $20 to $25 a month, depending on the exchange rate. Yeah, $20, $25 a month. That is insanely low compared to what we were paying in the United States, which was close to $2,000 a year. Um, the apartment fee is $175 a month, but that includes electricity, water, sewer, trash is included in that. Uh, we pay approximately... $60 a month for the gas and the heat. Uh, internet and 250 channels of cable TV costs us $30. That is bundled with our cell phones, which is $80 for both of our phones. And we got a little water filter system where every four months they come in and put in a new water filter. So all of that comes out to about $420 and $25 a month. 
And then you add on some Spotify, some VPN Prime, which we're going to get rid of, you know, some Apple storage. Uh, so we're spending about $500 a month just on those things for the apartment there. We're not talking food. We're not talking uh, health care. We're not talking clothes, hygiene, any of that item. But compared to what we were paying in the United States, this is definitely a lot less. Uh, if we go to where we were living in Colorado, so for example, here is what we ended up uh, having. Our mortgage was $850 a month. Now, the reason it was $850 a month is because we put a huge down payment and it brought that monthly price down. Normally, if you don't put down a huge down payment, you're looking about... 1500 basically about $2,000 a month uh, for the house that we had in the United States in Southern Colorado. Electricity is 125 a month. Water and sewer, that was an extra 65 Trash was $20, $20 a month on its own. Internet was $65, $75 a month. Gas and heat was $65 a month average. Property tax was $140 a month. So we're spending about $1,300, $1,400 a month off of that. So you can see that, you know, the differences between what we paid in uh, Colorado versus Korea, and this is kind of another breakdown of this, if we were renting the same type of property, it would cost us $2,000 a month for the house that we lived in. In Korea, if you rent it in what we have now, it's about $1,400 a month. Property tax is one sixty-five versus sixteen. dollars Electricity, 140 versus 40. Gas and heat, 90 versus 65. Uh, water, 40 versus 10. Now, this is comparing monthly expenses from rental properties. This wasn't the house that we had, but a comparable sized house to what we have here in Korea. Trash is $20 a month. Here it's included in the apartment fee. Internet, 75. Korea, it's 15. Cable TV was 15 versus 135 for 250 channels of cable. For the two cell phones in the United States, you're going to pay $130, maybe more. Here in Korea, we're paying 80. Car insurance is the only thing that is pretty much the same. It's about $110, $115 a month. Uh, and we just finished our first year, so we're going to be shopping around for other insurance to see if we can't save five or 10,000 won. So yeah, you can see the difference in living expenses here, and it is really, uh, it really kind of piqued our interest because with those reduced expenses of living overseas, that would allow us to retire early than retiring in the United States. So anyway, back to the whole thing. Uh, you're looking for apartments or properties, whether they're apartments, villas, uh, single family homes, or whatever in Korea. You have a budget. Maybe you've got financing in place or whatever. To narrow down your search, you can use Naver and use the real estate option with a web browser that has a translate plugin and you're able to search the peninsula for the properties that are there uh, which is kind of interesting let's let's take a look at Chejudo so there's Chejudo let's see if we can zoom in on that and see what properties there's any apartment buildings in that neck of the woods yeah because I've never even considered this 300 million one there's one trading there there's one there's three there's one man yeah, there's not a lot mostly onesies there's three let's see what that one looks like see if there's any pictures nope no pictures. There's one there. No pictures. There's one there. Oh, Golden Tree Residential Commercial Complex. For 250 million won, we're looking at a three bedroom, one bath. Let's see what the, the pictures look like. This is down in Chejudo. So we've got kind of a galley. We've got a kitchen at the end. More of a condo style apartment. So that's the entryway right there, a little small TV area. Very small bedroom, wardrobe. Hmm. Okay, not bad. Little walk-in closet. Wow, 
That is white. <laughs> Very nice though. It must be the master bedroom. Here's the kitchen. Uh, if you notice in some of these pictures, you'll see that they have two refrigerators. One refrigerator is a kimchi refrigerator and freezer. The other one is a regular refrigerator and freezer. Uh, Koreans eat a lot of kimchi. Kimchi is pretty good. So we got a, uh, got a little stove there. We got an oven. That's an induction stove or an induction yeah, uh, tabletop. That little veranda thing there. Little galley kitchen. Eh. Not a big fan of it, but yeah. Um, but it, again, it's a great way to check out properties of places uh, here in Korea is by using Naver and the real estate function that we saw right there, being able to come to the map. Uh, just basically click on wherever on the map, and then what you can end up doing is zooming out and uh, kind of do some recon by... Uh, I guess recon by map, I guess. But if you know a little bit of Korean, at least know the names of the cities that you're interested in living, Naver can really help you narrow down the properties that you want to look at so that you don't waste a lot of time. Um, and again, it's, it's, it's a great way. Check with your realtor as well and tell them what you're interested in and if they can send you some property links for websites. Uh, or send us a, a link to the to this property that you think would be good for us, and then we you could review it before you actually go see it, and you know and say no, that's not really we don't like the color, we don't like the layout, we want something, you know, instead of wasting their time and yours, uh, online websites like Neighbor Real Estate can really help you in your search. So anyway, that is uh, that's that's how we found our property. Now, the other way that we found our property is because we had been stationed at Camp Humphreys and other places in Korea. And since the wife's family is in this local area, we kind of had an idea of about three apartment complexes that we were already interested in. Because we already knew the neighborhoods, we had been there, we had lived in that area. So we kind of knew our way around. But with the neighbor real estate uh, website, the great thing was is we could narrow down our search into, yeah, we like the colors, you know, the wife buys the apartment. You know, I like the colors, I like the layout, I like this, I don't like that. And you can narrow down your search for properties and it will make things a whole lot easier for you and for your realtor. So with that being said, uh, that's about it for today. I gotta take some more cold medicine and um, we'll see you on the next video. So if you got questions, put them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, smash that subscribe button, hit ding the bell, ding and uh, keep you up to date of being retired in Korea or the hobby stuff that I do and kind of like painting these little dudes here. I don't know if you can see that guy there. Yeah, it's kind of hard. But I end up painting some miniatures or whatever. But it, it gets kind of... Of course, the, the lighting isn't, isn't the best. But... That, going to the gym and whatever stuff is a mishmash on this channel, uh, that's what we got. Okay, so that's going to be it. We'll see you. Peace.